Before we dive into this Discipleship Explored, our subject matter for this week and being obedient to Christ, I want to give you a quick update on Fat Rector Slim. As you may know, I'm on a health kick to try and lose a bit of this weight, but also to raise money for the parish at the same time. Some of you have been kind enough to sponsor me pound per pound or 50p per pound or, or 20p per pound that I lose. Uh, and I have some good news for you this week, because over the last three weeks, I have lost 35 pound. So come on, guys, pay up. Yeah, yeah, you're right. I suspect some of you may not believe that I have managed to lose that much in just three weeks. You might, you may say something like, uh, well, Max, you look as though you might lost a pound or two, but to lose two and a half stone in three weeks, I don't think so. There doesn't seem to be any evidence of that. And today, actually, the word evidence is key as we look at what it means to be obedient to Christ. It's the key word for today's subject matter. Where is the evidence in our lives that we are followers of Jesus, that we are apprentices of Jesus? Where is the evidence that we are obedient to Christ? I don't know about you, but sometimes I come across people who say things like this. They say things like, well, I might come to church on a Sunday, but to be honest with you, it's just full of hypocrites. Now, of course, the textbook answer to that would be, well, come on in, one more won't make any difference. But the reality is, actually, that is a reasonable concern, isn't it? Do the people who call themselves followers of Christ actually act like that? You may well know that the uh, word that we use for, for hypocrites comes from the Greek word hypocritus, which uh, means actor. And it literally is translated from, um, from the Greek phrase to interpret from beneath. Uh, because what would happen is actors in, uh, in ancient Greece would wear a mask to, to, to express the character that they were playing. And they would literally speak their words from under the mask, as it were, from beneath, from behind the mask. And of course, the question is, do we wear a mask? Do we act one way on a Sunday, but then go out into the world Monday to Saturday and act quite differently? Or do we act one way in front of those who we go to church with, those who we do life group with, home group with, but then when we're at work, act differently? Well, Paul starts our reading today that Catherine read with a call to us to act the same all the time. Therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but how much more in my absence. A call to us to be the same wherever we are. But maybe the question is more, why obey or be obedient at all? Well, as ever, the clue is in the very first word that Paul says. He says, therefore, and as we know, when we read the word therefore, what Paul is about to say is based upon what he has already said. And what Paul has already said to us over the last few weeks through Philippians is that we can be confident in Christ, that we can trust that Jesus is there for us, that we can live in Christ, putting God first in our lives. And as we heard last week, whatever happens, whatever happens, we must be one in Christ. We must be united as God's people here in Bedhampton, as his church. We must be united across the world. And all of, the, all of this has been covered over the last few weeks and, and the uh, videos and discussion videos uh, are up on our website. You can go up and uh, check those out. But one of the key things that we must understand, the therefore part, is this. As we heard last week, we heard about Jesus, who is God, did not consider equality with God 
something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing, but taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Jesus models obedience in the coming of his kingdom. The evidence is that the servant king is obedient, obedient to the cross, to death for you and I. Therefore, we are obedient to God because Christ was obedient to the cross. In other words, we are obedient, we love because we were first loved by God, who was obedient to death for you and I. So even though you and I may not like the idea of being obedient, we need to look at this deeply. You see, if we are apprentices to Jesus, the evidence of obedience will be seen in our lives by others. Now that is challenging, isn't it? Is the evidence of your obedience to Christ seen by others in you? Is the evidence of me being obedient to Jesus seen by others, seen by your family, your friends? Because Paul says, our family and our friends, my family and my friends will see Jesus in us by the way we are obedient to God, by the difference our faith makes in us. Work out your salvation, Paul says, with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose. Do everything, he says, without grumbling or arguing, so that you may become blameless and pure. Children of God without fault in a warped and crooked generation. And then you will shine. You will shine among them like stars in the sky as you hold firmly to the word of life. As I read those words and as I prepared, I believe the Holy Spirit spoke to me and dragged me back to the Old Testament, to the old part of our scriptures, the part before Jesus came. I got dragged back to Genesis and to Exodus as I read those words. I wonder if God is speaking to us in that today. You see, as we know, Paul was a man of the Jewish faith before he chose to follow Jesus. Not just any person, but actually a teacher of the Jewish faith. Paul knows his scriptures. Paul knows his history. Paul knows his Jewish traditions. I wonder if Paul is alluding to to that, to his ancestors in these words. In Exodus we read, in the desert the whole community grumbled against Moses and Aaron. That's from chapter 16, verse 2. The whole community grumbled. Is Paul saying, look, this is what happens when you grumble? As we know, Moses was a sort of foretelling of Jesus, was a a type of Jesus. Is Paul saying, actually, if you grumble and are disobedient to God, you will wander around the desert for years and not know true faith? Is Paul saying, if you are disobedient to God, you will go to church week in, week out and still not find peace and still not find the life to the full that Christ promises. And then on the flip side, we read that you will shine among others. If you're obedient to Christ, you will shine among others like stars in the sky as you hold firmly to the word of life. And again, I was was just dragged back to Genesis and and Abraham and and the trust that Abraham had, the faith, the obedience that Abraham had in God. And his reward, I will make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky, he says. Is God promising us blessing upon blessing? Is God promising us life to the full, a life of peace when we are obedient to Christ, when we work out our salvation with fear and trembling. Not that we earn our salvation. You can never earn your salvation. 
Jesus has already done that. But that our response is that because we were first loved, we love and we work out in obedience our salvation in Christ. That there is evidence in our life that people see the difference. I wonder what our take home message is today. You see, for me today, the question may be, are you and I willing to examine ourselves? Are we willing to examine ourselves in obedience to Christ and say, is there evidence that I am a follower of Jesus in my life? If we look at the example of Jesus, or indeed Paul, or even in the examples that Paul mentions in today's passages, Timothy and Epaphroditus, Paul mentions that they are good examples of lives. Do other people see that in us? In another letter to uh, a church in Galatia, Paul writes in Galatians 5, But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. He says the acts of the flesh are obvious, i.e. the evidence that you are not committed to Christ are obvious, and they are sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfishness, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, orgies and the like. And he says, I warn you as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. Is the evidence in our lives any one of those? Rage, dissension amongst each other. But he goes on, but the fruit of the Spirit, the evidence that you are a follower of Jesus, is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. Not that we have it sorted, but that these are the goals in our lives, that we seek to be obedient to Christ by becoming like him, with love and joy, peace and forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. And so perhaps the question for us this week is to ask ourselves, are we willing to examine the evidence in our lives? Are we truly obedient to Christ?